Thanks. Uh, this is part of the ongoing MTAC seminar series, and uh, today we'll be talking about the uh, Great Barrier Reef report card and how we use that to track agricultural inputs to the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. My name is Heath Kelsey, and uh, I'll be presenting the uh, report card discussion today, but also have lots of other uh, co-authors as well to acknowledge uh, them, especially the, uh, the folks in Australia that put uh, the effort and funding behind the report card. We'll talk first about the Great Barrier Reef uh, in general. I'm, I'm sure most of you know uh, about the Great Barrier Reef, um, but we'll also talk about the Paddock Debris Program, which is a water quality protection program designed to protect the resource of the reef, how we report the concepts and metrics for the report card, and then the report card itself, how we deliver that, that message. The Great Barrier Reef is a, it's a world heritage area. Most people know about it or of it about where it is, um, but it's very big, it's 2,300 kilometers long, uh, lots of uh, great habitats, 2,900 separate reefs, reef systems, and uh, also uh, great habitat for seagrass meadows and mangroves and other things as well. So any way you look at it, it's a great natural resource, um, and very importantly, it also contributes about $6 billion annually to the uh, uh, Australian uh, economy. So any way you look at it, it's a resource that the Australians would really like to preserve. Threats to the reef are the usual suspects like uh, climate change and coastal development, etc., um, and point source diffusion or uh, pollution as well. The purpose of the report card is to focus on non-point source pollution from agricultural sources. So that's the, the point of the report card. Um, and the idea here is also that um, because of the one of the most important threats that is recognized to the Great Barrier Reef is from climate change, and the Australian and Queensland state governments recognize that they can't do very much um, about that locally, um, but they can do things to help hopefully improve the resilience of the reef. So if they can reduce agricultural stresses, um, stresses from agricultural pollution, hopefully that will uh, increase the resilience of the, the reef a little bit in the face of climate change. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, the Great Barrier Reef is, uh, the Marine Park Authority is divided up into six separate sections. So we have the, these um, Cape York, Wet Tropics, Burdick and Mekiewicz, and Fitzroy and Burnett Mary parts to the park. Those are different regions within the park. Um, and we report on those separately, and then we'll also wrap those up in an overall score for the, the Great Barrier Reef. And on this slide, I wanted to, to recognize that um, this brown uh, area, this brown land use area, is all grazing. So grazing is the predominant land use, and most of the, the catchments are watersheds in the area. And near the coast, especially where you have high rainfall, we also have a lot of sugar cane and um, other crops being developed too. In the far north, we have a lot of protected areas, a lot of uh, forest um, and, and tropical parks uh, that are, are highly protected. And uh, the far north region is um, far less used as well. The Paddock to Reef program is a program to protect water quality entering the reef lagoon. So it's uh, that that area between the coast and uh, the reef proper, the outer reef. Um, and uh, agricultural enterprises are producing uh, pesticide and sediment and nutrient pollution that go into the, that um, uh, reef lagoon. And uh, the Paddock to Reef program was designed to help uh, curb some of those inputs uh, to, the, to the lagoon. The targets for the Paddock to Reef program in 2013 are to improve agricultural practices mostly. Um, and we want to have 80% of the agricultural folks using improved practices. And we'll talk about what those are in a minute. And 50% for the grazing industry. And there's an element of realism there as well. This is so much, so much grazing. Um, and we'll talk about what those practices are in a second. <coughs> and also minimum 50% late dry season ground cover. Um, and uh, no let, net loss of uh, wetlands and reverse that decline in water quality as well. <clears throat> By 2020, we want to have a 20% reduction in total suspended solids entering the reef lagoon and also uh, an, an added step. The water quality entering that lagoon will, we will not just uh, halt at the decline, but that water entering the, the lagoon will not have any negative impacts on it. Uh, <coughs> on the reef ecosystem. Excuse me. <clears throat> when we talk about the 
land management practice adoption metrics. These are the uh, metrics for the agricultural folks to move to better management practices. <clears throat> they developed an ABCD framework. So A's and B's are uh, better practices. Um, a, a B is the current best management practices. A is a little bit more um, research oriented, a little more cutting edge, needs a little bit more research. C is the common practice that's uh, barely acceptable, uh, but people should be moved to uh, better management practices. And a D are unacceptable practices under current standards and not um, adequately protecting uh, water quality. <coughs> Um, and there are different parts to this as well, but uh, we want to move, in general, people from the C and D categories to the A's and B's. So when we say we want 80% of the folks to be in the better management practices, we want 80% of the folks in the A and B category. We measure that with uh, an industry uh, self-reporting mechanism right now. So it's, it's industry reported, self-reporting, but it's also overseen by a, an independent management agency too. So um, <coughs> uh, currently better management practices are, are um, practiced by 20% of the sugar cane growers, so we have quite a bit of uh, room to improve there. 62% uh, of the horticulture producers and 50% of the grazers too. And remember that 50% um, was our target for the grazing industry. And that's a, a big um, sector of land use in the the Great Barrier Reef uh, catchments. That's going to be revisited a little bit. It's probably not going to stay at 50%. Uh, that's based on very limited data, so it's probably going to change uh, and be re revisited next year. Catchment loads are based on, uh, uh, these numbers are based on uh, validated models, so it's a combination of model uh, loads and uh, measured, <coughs> measured loads as well. Total nitrogen and uh, or nitrogen and phosphorus. And you can see this hashed area here is the modeled load had there been no um, European involvement. So it's pretty European, um, quote unquote, natural load. And these white bars represent the targets. So at the baseline, here we are, um, at 80,000 tons per year of total nitrogen entering the, the reef lagoon of my models. And we want to reduce that uh, by 50%. <coughs> Similarly, for sediments, uh, the, the goal is 20% reduction. Um, and that's, uh, here's the current and the, the, um, uh, the model pre-European load as well. And pesticides obviously has no pre-European uh, model load, no natural load of pesticide, and there's the uh, reduction for that. So in the coming years, hopefully we'll be able to show where we were and track progress in reducing um, these loads. It's going to be a little bit difficult because of the, the way loading estimates are done and how different um, years are uh, based on the rainfall and, and flood events. But that's the plan. We next look at the marine water quality, uh, seagrass, and coral quality. So uh, we look at the, the overall marine ecosystem quality, and we've developed uh, a method to track both seagrass, coral, and water quality using uh, separate metrics uh, that go into a seagrass index, and water quality index, and a coral index. So for seagrass, we have a reproduction abundance and uh, nutrient status metrics, and those are wrapped up into an overall uh, seagrass score. Similarly for coral, we have uh, coral cover, algae, uh, juvenile index, and sediment index, and those are wrapped up in the overall uh, coral index. Water quality, so far we have chlorophyll A and total suspended solids. Pesticides is, is something we're working on trying to get it, um, to put in there as well. We don't have great ways to measure pesticide. Um, concentrations at such a large uh, scale, so we're still working on that one. And hopefully that one's going to be included in the water quality index in, in coming years. So how do we uh, present this? This is a, uh, um, a trifold, kind of like the, the Chesapeake Bay report card and the Coastal Bay's report card is presented as a, a three-page thing. It's a, it's a bit larger. Um, it's A4 size, which is roughly equivalent to the 8.5 by 11 size. Um, and this is the front, this is the back, and this is the inside flap. So the first thing you see when you open it on the right side is, is this map. Provide some context um, where the, uh, the sampling sites are and things, and then the key findings are, are on the back. And in the middle, the trifold that, that it opens up, um, we present a whole lot of information, uh, we think in a very succinct way. 
we look at the land practice results for the different agricultural enterprises. We have the catchment results, including the uh, wetlands, riparian, and um, ground cover scores, the loading scores, and then the uh, marine scores as well. So it's, it's a neat framework because it's the first time we've really been able to track and report on things from um, a, a management side, a management indicator, through to the watershed and loads and then quality of the uh, downstream water quality. So we think this is a really um, neat approach and the one we tried, we'd like to emulate in other places. Um, it's going to take us a little while, I think, to, to get there, but um, we like that approach. Also, um, some more contextual information for the report card, the land use information, and also the, uh, the rainfall information, where rainfall was in the past year as well. I mentioned that we prepared the overall report card from the six regional scores, or six regional um, metrics as well. So we did the same, those same metrics, same measurements for each one of the individual uh, sub-regions of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park and the watersheds associated with them. And so uh, this one is for the Cape York. Those are um, meant to be inserts to the, the trifold, so they're one page uh, front and back. And that's, when you open it up, that's what you'd see. So you'd see the, the same kind of information, the same kind of contextual information, the uh, conceptual diagram that is uh, specific to that particular region, what, what uh, the processes and inputs and things are that are specific to that uh, catchment or watershed, and then the same results for land practice, catchment results, and marine results as well. Um, and so we, it, it's, it's a nice system to have uh, the overall results, and then you can go dig in and find the individual results for, for particular regions as well. The key findings, again, uh, unacceptable management practices by 34% of sugar cane growers and 24% of uh, horticultural enterprises and 50% of the grazers, and remember that's our goal, um, but uh, that's based on probably data that's not quite adequate. Um, it's based on a couple of regions, and uh, that's probably going to change. Total watershed loads are five to nine times higher than natural for suspended solids, nitrogen, and, and phosphorus, and about 28,000 kilograms of pesticides enter the reef lagoon uh, annually, uh, as estimated by the models. Overall, the Great Barrier Reef quality was moderate condition, but it's highly variable. If you look at the individual regional results, some of them are um, uh, much better than some of the other ones. So they, they kind of average out to be a moderate condition, but some of them are uh, uh, much worse off than the other ones. <clears throat> uh, to acknowledge the, the folks that were uh, a part of this project, we were um, actually a, just a small part of this project. We worked directly with reef catchments and the Queensland government to pull this together, but there are a lot of data providers, a lot of people put uh, effort into bringing all the information and all the folks together to bring this report card together and uh, make it a reality. Um, the, you can get to the report card by looking at these two uh, URLs, uh, either the Ian Press uh, URL or the uh, go directly to the Queensland government and you can download it there, in addition to the reef plan and the uh, water quality protection plan. And that's all. Um, well, thanks very much, and uh, I'm taking questions now.